You know that saying, money can't buy happiness? Well, I think it's complete bullshit. And sure, simply having money doesn't automatically guarantee you're going to be a happy and fulfilled person, but I think it absolutely gives you the opportunity to become one, and I'm about to prove it. I think the thing that pisses me off the most about this saying is that it's always being said by out-of-touch rich people who seem to be just trying to convince everybody else that somehow their excessive wealth hasn't actually made their life any better, and I'm not buying it. There is no correlation between how much money someone makes and their level of happiness. Like sure, you can be a multimillionaire and still have a bad day. That happens to everybody, that's part of being alive. But if you're genuinely convinced that having money hasn't at all affected your quality of life, then why don't you give it all away and let some other people put that theory to the test, right? Being rich and sad will always be better than being poor and sad, and nobody can convince me otherwise. And now that's not to say that there isn't a point of diminishing returns, because you could be super rich, you could have everything you could ever want and ever need, and still be a miserable sack of shit, but at that point, that's on you. But for most of us normal people, the things that make us unhappy on a day-to-day -day basis are almost always things that could be improved or even completely resolved with money. And so in this video, we're gonna debunk the idea that money can't buy happiness, because I think it can. But before we dive into that, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Ritual. I've always said that investing into your health is one of the best things you can do to live a happy and fulfilled life. And personally, I try to eat reasonably healthy most days, and I think I do a pretty decent job. But even still, there can be certain vitamins and certain nutrients that are really hard to get no matter how balanced your diet is. I've been taking a few different vitamins for quite a while now, but I always found it pretty difficult to stay consistent with taking them all at once, not to mention pretty expensive. Instead, I recently started taking Ritual Essential for Women 18 Plus. It's one simple multivitamin capsule taken twice a day, which has been specially formulated to fill common dietary gaps, specifically focusing on brain and bone health, blood building, and antioxidant support. I tend to look at it as kind of an extra insurance just to make sure my body's getting everything it needs. Ritual is vegan friendly, which as you guys know is very important to me. It's also non-GMO, gluten-free, and free of major allergens. And if for any reason you don't love Ritual after 30 days, they'll give you a full refund, no questions asked. So it's kind of a no-brainer. To get 30% off your first month of Ritual, head over to ritual.com slash according to Nicole 30, or scan this QR code right here, or click the link below. Thank you again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Have you ever heard of it? It's a psychological theory that offers a basic framework for how one can achieve a life full of happiness and fulfillment and meaning by addressing the various types of needs we have as human beings in order of importance. If you've never heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I would highly recommend looking it up on the Google machine because I think it's super interesting. We're not gonna get too deep into that specifically in this video, but we're gonna be talking about the five things that I personally think that we all need to live a happy and fulfilled life and how money impacts all of them. Starting at perhaps the most obvious point, which is comfort and safety. This isn't going to be a shocker to anybody, but in order to have somewhere to live, you need money, obviously, right? No shit, Sherlock! Whether you rent, whether you own, whatever your situation is, everybody needs money to be able to have somewhere to live, somewhere to have a roof over their head. But the amount of money you have directly affects the quality of your living situation. On the extreme end, we might see somebody who's living in poverty. Maybe they're homeless. They can't afford anywhere to live. And you can't tell me that for that person, money isn't going to affect their quality of life and subsequently their happiness, because of course it will. Money would quite literally dictate whether or not they're sleeping on the street tonight or whether or not they have a roof over their head. But even in less extreme examples, there are millions of people across the world living in situations where they are unhappy, but they are stuck because of their financial situation. This might mean that they're stuck living with an abusive spouse. It might mean that they're stuck living with a roommate that they don't get along with. It might mean that they're stuck living in an apartment that's run down and dirty and maybe not up to code, maybe not even a safe place to be. Here in Toronto, we have a housing crisis going on where the demand for housing far exceeds the available supply, which has driven prices up and up and up, meaning that people are able to afford less and less and less. More and more people are now living in illegal basement apartments. This is a big thing here where people have bought houses that they can't even afford. And so they rent out their basements to offset their own living expenses, but they're not registered with the city usually. There's no fire escapes. There's so many things that are not up to code. And I know a lot of people living in these environments where they have to deal with things like mold and mildew growing on their clothing due to the dampness of the basements, noise from their upstairs neighbors, which sometimes is the homeowners and sometimes is another tenant. Sometimes they're dealing with things like cockroaches and rats and all sorts of pests. They generally don't have any outside space. They have very few windows, so they get almost no natural light. Often they have very little privacy. And for a lot of people, this is all they can afford. Are you gonna tell me that people who are living in that situation wouldn't have a happier life if they had more money and could afford a better place to live? And obviously access to transportation is equally affected. To somebody who doesn't have a car, doesn't have the ability to drive, 
their world becomes very, very small because they are limited to what they can access on foot or possibly by public transit if that's even an option. That means that the places that they can shop for groceries are limited, the places that they can work are limited, the people that they can visit are limited, and often that comes at a cost in and of itself. People who don't have access to a vehicle wind up having to settle for whatever options are accessible to them, and sometimes they actually wind up paying more for things than they otherwise would because they don't have the option to shop around or they don't have the option to drive a little further for a better paying job. Like all of these things that people take for granted are huge. From the time that I was 14 until I got my driver's license at 19, I walked everywhere and took public transit as well. And living in the suburbs, that was easier said than done. Nothing was close by, everything was a huge trek. I often had to take several buses just to get to one place. It was cold, I walked in the snow and in the rain and it was miserable. And when I finally got my driver's license and bought myself a cheap little old car, it made me so much happier. It was a $4,000 car, which on the scale of cars is very inexpensive, but $4,000 is a lot of money to somebody who doesn't have it. That money and the car that I bought with it absolutely improved my quality of life and made me much happier. It made me much more comfortable physically. It gave me access to more places. It saved me so much time. And even for somebody who maybe already has a car, but one that's old and broken down and unreliable, obviously money could fix that situation too. And let's talk about health. This is a really big one that affects everybody, but I think it affects Americans even more. Here as a Canadian, I have socialized medicine and it doesn't cover everything. It doesn't cover optometry, it doesn't cover dentistry, it doesn't cover mental health care, it doesn't cover prescriptions, but it covers the basics. It means if I have to go to see a doctor or I have to go to the ER, I'm not gonna walk out with a bill, which is huge. You guys in America, you can't say the same. And I know that you pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for insurance or you get your insurance through your job, which means that you're stuck there even if it's a toxic environment, even if you don't wanna be there, you're tied because of your insurance. And how many people pay hundreds of dollars a month for insurance that they still can't afford to use because they can't afford to pay the deductibles or the copays? We hear about these stories all the time of, especially as a Canadian, it blows my mind where I hear of Americans rationing their insulin because they can't afford to fill their prescriptions and they can die from that and many people have. Not so fun fact, but people die every single day from treatable, preventable illnesses simply because they don't have access to the resources or the money that they need to be able to address them before they get out of hand. Mr. Burns, I'm afraid you are the sickest man in the United States. You have everything. And even on a lighter note, healthy food is often a lot more expensive than its junk food counterparts, which just creates this huge cycle where people who don't have enough money buy crappy food and they eat it over a long period of time and they get sick and then they can't afford to go to the doctor, they can't afford to take time off work, they can't afford to make themselves better, things that are small become big. It's a mess. I notice even personally, just on a day-to-day -day basis, the difference that I feel in my body when I eat like fruits and vegetables and healthy home-cooked stuff versus when I eat junk food or takeout food or something gross like that is immense. It affects my brain, it affects my ability to focus, it affects everything that I do. And I know that if I could only afford to eat junk food, I'd walk around feeling really like gross and heartburny and bloated and sick all the time. And let's go back to mental health here just for a second. Obviously mental health issues can affect everybody and it has nothing to do with how much money you have. You can be really rich and still suffer from depression and anxiety and all sorts of other issues, but having money can give you access to the resources you need to try to overcome those things. It can give you access to therapy and medications and all sorts of things that other people otherwise just have to suffer through. And so yes, I guess you can still be unhappy if you have mental illness, even if you're rich, but being rich gives you access to the resources to try to improve your situation rather than just letting it fester and get worse. Next, we're gonna move up the ladder here a little bit. We're gonna talk about stress relief, we're gonna talk about relaxation, and we're gonna talk about convenience. People who are struggling financially often have very little time to themselves. Sometimes they're working multiple jobs or they're trying to just pick up extra shifts whenever possible, but it means that they have very little downtime and it means that they can't afford for something to go wrong. But of course, money changes all of this. It determines how many hours you have to work to get by. It determines what you have to do yourself and what you can outsource. It determines if you can afford to take time off of work when you're sick or even when you just feel like you need a break. Rich people usually outsource everything, and I think that they greatly underestimate how much time that gives them and how much that affects their general well-being. Rich people hire landscapers and gardeners and people to clean their pools and people to clean their houses and people to detail their cars and watch their kids and walk their dogs and basically do everything for them. And that means that they can spend more time relaxing or in some cases working more so they can earn even more money. During the entire duration of the pandemic, I was really stressed about getting COVID. I've actually never had it still today, but I was really stressed not because I thought I was gonna get super sick or I thought I was gonna die or something terrible like that was gonna happen, but I was really stressed because I knew if I caught it, I had to take two weeks off of work and I don't get any sick days and I don't get any paid time off. And two weeks of missed work is a lot for me when I have bills to pay. And just the thought of having to miss work if I got sick was so stressful to me that I know that if I had gotten sick, I wouldn't even be able to focus on trying to get better because I would just be stressed out financially. Being able to afford to take time off of work or being able to afford to outsource or automate certain things can relieve so much stress off of somebody's plate 
And that relief of stress to me equals happiness. Something that's a mild inconvenience to somebody who has money can be a crisis to somebody who doesn't. I remember seeing a news story one time of this old woman somewhere in America and she'd gotten a speeding ticket and she couldn't afford to pay it. And so the speeding ticket obviously accrued interest or penalties or whatever, and it got higher and higher and higher. And of course she still couldn't afford to pay it. And eventually they came to her house and they arrested her. And she spent a night in jail because she couldn't afford to pay a speeding ticket, right? To somebody who has money, they would be annoyed by the ticket. They'd be a little pissed off, but they'd pay it and they'd move on with their life. To somebody who doesn't have the money, it can ruin their life. All right, let's lighten the mood up here just for a second. Let's talk about fun. Let's talk about things like going out with friends, going out to restaurants, vacationing, investing in hobbies. Obviously all of those things have direct implication on your happiness and they obviously all cost money too. Personally, I've never been a believer in the idea that you have to spend a lot of money to have fun, but it can be fun to spend money. I think one of the most fulfilling things for most of us is having hobbies and having interests and having access to hobbies and interests, having the means to invest money and time into those things has a huge effect on our overall happiness as human beings. Of course, you can still be a happy person without having the ability to go out to eat or without traveling. Those things are not imperative to your survival or your happiness necessarily but having options is really liberating. Having the ability to decide for yourself whether or not you want to do those things rather than just being automatically excluded all the time, I think really affects somebody's overall well-being, their sense of self, their sense of self-worth, and of course, their happiness. And finally, something that I think money absolutely buys, and one of the most important things that money buys, in my opinion, is the ability to say no. The truth is, of course, that money doesn't directly buy happiness, but it buys you a ticket out of the things that make you unhappy, and for me, that's huge. Having a little bit of FU money gives you autonomy. It gives you the ability to quit a job that you hate. It gives you the ability to determine how you want to spend your time. It gives you the ability to take risks with fewer consequences. When I think back to some of the jobs that I had when I was younger, some of the things that they made me do and how little they paid me to do these things that I hated doing so much, I really, I mean, I've come a long way for starters, but it really makes me think about how much pressure I put on myself when I felt like I had my back up against the wall and I didn't feel like I had the ability to say no because I couldn't afford to take the risk. I remember having a retail job and going to work one day, having just gotten over a bout of pneumonia or bronchitis or something, I was still all phlegmy, I felt terrible. It was pouring rain outside and when I got to the store that day, the manager said to me, hey, you know what? We need some extra hands in the parking lot today, so you're gonna spend the day outside pushing grocery carts. And that was the last thing in the world I wanted to be doing. I still felt under the weather and like I said, it was raining and it was cold. And even on a good day, like I don't wanna be doing that. And I didn't feel like I had, I didn't have the confidence to say no. I didn't feel like I could say no because I couldn't take the risk of being let go from that job as a result. And I was getting paid like maybe 12 bucks an hour at that point. So it really wasn't a lot of money, but to me at the time it was because it's all I had. And I just remember being so miserable doing it and thinking to myself, like I have to get out of here. But it really makes me think about a lot of other situations I was in in the past and past jobs things that they made me do that I was really, really uncomfortable or unhappy about having to do, like starting really early or staying really late or both or whatever other tasks where I'm like, I really don't wanna do this. This is stressing me out. This is upsetting me. This is making me really uncomfortable, but I didn't feel like I had the ability to say no because I couldn't take that risk. But this goes far past just low wage jobs. Anybody who's ever been self-employed or, or run their own business of any sort has probably come across projects or clients or customers or requests from people that they're really not happy about. Maybe it's something as simple as just not being excited about the project. Maybe it's a client that you can tell right from the start is gonna be really difficult. Maybe there's something else about the situation that feels off to you. But when you don't have a financial safety net or you're not busy enough to be able to be choosy, you have to take whatever you can get. If you're not desperate for money, if you're making enough to support yourself, if you have a little nest egg on the side, or even if your business is just busy enough that you can be choosy, you can turn down the things that are going to stress you out. You can turn down the things you don't want to do and again that's such a privilege that not everybody has but it's directly tied to the amount of money you have and how much desperation you feel to try to make more i think i've driven the point home by now or at least i hope so i think it's very obvious that for most of us our level of happiness is directly tied to our financial situation in fact i think the whole reason that people try to convince us otherwise is just to try to make themselves feel better to try to make themselves feel more relatable and it's it's not working i am riding on the bus hi aren't you that guy everybody hates Money turns emergencies into annoyances. It gives you options and opportunities to pursue the things that make you happy in life and the ability to avoid the things that make you unhappy. And perhaps most importantly, it frees you from one of the biggest stressors of all, not having enough money. And anyone who tries to tell you otherwise is lying to you or they're just an idiot. 
But of course, as always, these are just my thoughts and opinions and I would love to know yours. So drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Does money affect your level of happiness? Maybe you have a real life example of how it does or doesn't. And I would love to know what you think. So let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video at all, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can follow me on Instagram. Once again, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor Ritual for some amazing multivitamins. The link will be in the description box down below. Thank you again as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next week.